Hi, I'm Scott Hinkstrom. I'm an Extension Wildlife Specialist with the University of Nebraska. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about surveys. Now, if you choose to control black-tailed prairie dogs to reduce competition between livestock and prairie dogs, and perhaps to uh, protect human health and safety, and if you choose to use anticoagulant baits for this control of prairie dogs, you must by label conduct follow-up surveys to remove dead or dying prairie dogs above ground and any bait that might be spilled or present above ground. So in this video I'm going to talk about the proper techniques that you can use to conduct these surveys, how to dispose of prairie dogs that you find above ground and the baits that you might find above ground, and how to report any incidents such as these. Now this is going to be a fairly short video and so I can't cover all the information that's uh, necessary. But you can access all of this information by looking at the product labels, by looking at the product websites, and also taking a look at the uh, website by the Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There are several options that you can consider when managing black-tailed prairie dogs, such as deferred grazing, exclusion, trapping, and shooting. And all of these techniques are covered in the NEB guide that we have on black-tailed prairie dogs. But for this video, I need to focus on five pesticides, or the five that are registered for black-tailed prairie dogs in Nebraska. Those include zinc phosphide treated bait, rosol chlorofacinone treated bait, kaput diphasinone treated bait, aluminum phosphide fumigant, and gas cartridges which also are a fumigant. The first four are restricted use pesticides and can only be purchased and applied by certified pesticide applicators. Gas cartridges are a general use pesticide and they can be purchased and used by those who do not have a certified pesticide applicator license. So great care is required for the use of these pesticides. Read and abide by your pesticide label because these labels include all of the information that you need to know about proper application, the site and time of the application, safety, personal protective equipment, and non-target hazards. To illustrate the proper application of these various pesticides, we're joined by Wayne Holman. Wayne is, an ex uh, is a wildlife specialist who works with the U.S. Department of Agriculture Wildlife Services, and he has an extensive experience with uh, applying these various products. With a zinc phosphide treated bait, it's registered for use on rangeland and non-cropland areas from July 1st through January 31st. Pre-baiting with zinc phosphide is mandatory by the label. And to pre-bait, what you use is a teaspoon of untreated oats. That would be steamrolled oats. And it's applied from the hip, as you see here, so that it drops on the edge of the prairie dog burrow in roughly a six inch bait spot and that is on the edge of an active mound. You do this pre-baiting about one to two days before treatment and that is applying the zinc phosphate treated oats to condition the prairie dogs onto feeding on oats. And This is critical because you have to condition prairie dogs otherwise they won't feed on that zinc phosphate. It's important that you observe the prairie dog Tom before you apply any of your pesticide because you want to be able to avoid any risk associated with non-target animals. You cannot apply zinc phosphide treated oats within seven kilometers of any prairie dog town unless three issues are addressed. Number one, you're dealing with an isolated prairie dog colony that is less than 80 acres in size. Number two, you will have completed a survey for black-footed ferrets. Or number three, the area has been cleared by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Now as far as the baiting with the zinc phosphide treated oats, <clears throat> you apply it about one to two days after you've applied your pre-bait. You again apply a teaspoon of the zinc phosphide treated oats in the same manner that you applied the pre-bait. You drop it from the hip on the edge of the active mound and then you leave the area so that the prairie dogs will come up and feed on the zinc phosphide treated oats. You can also apply zinc phosphide treated oats by mechanical uh, applicator, uh, such as the ATV with the hoppers and the application uh, tool you see here. 
It's especially useful for larger towns, um, whereas uh, walking around and hand baiting could be quite timely, uh, time consuming. You cannot apply zinc phosphide treated oats in the same season, uh, second time. It's only one time application per season. Zinc phosphide is about 75% effective in treating or in controlling prairie dogs and it costs about $15 per acre. The next two toxicants that I'd like to address are rosol, which is a chlorofacinone treated bait, and kaput, which is a difacinone treated bait. Now both of these chemical compounds are what we call anticoagulants, so they have the same mode of action. And as a result, they have the same restrictions and application requirements. Both rosol and kaput are registered for application on range lands and non-crop areas from October 1st through March 31st. Neither of the two products require pre-baiting, as we talked about with the zinc phosphide. To bait with either rosol or kaput, you need to use a quarter cup of bait, roughly 53 to 56 grams of the bait, and it's placed directly down into the burrow. And it has to be placed six inches below ground in the active burrow, as opposed to being applied above ground. Mechanical applicators can also be used for the application of rosol and kaput, uh, such as an ATV uh, with hoppers. When you're applying these two anticoagulant toxicants, you must follow up after the application of the bait, four to five days after application. With the anticoagulant baits, rosol and kaput, you can apply the products again in the same season. So you can reapply if necessary. And both rosol and kaput are typically 90% effective in reducing prairie dog numbers, and they cost about $22 per acre. The third toxicant I need to address is the aluminum phosphide fumigant. This product is recommended in, uh, for use in early spring and typically in small colonies or after uh, a application of one of your baits. So it's used oftentimes as a follow-up to a bait application. Observation again is required over the town before the aluminum phosphide fumigant is applied to avoid any non-target non hazards. For example, burrowing owls, swift fox, black-footed ferrets. You can't apply the product in areas where you might be presenting a hazard to these non-target species. You cannot apply the product within seven kilometers of a prairie dog town unless, number one, the prairie dog town is isolated and less than 80 acres. Number two, you've completed a survey for black-footed ferrets. Or, number three, the town has been cleared by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. In addition, with aluminum phosphide, you must develop a fumigation management plan, and that is done to provide the details necessary for safe and effective application. Have this plan with you when you're applying the product. To apply aluminum phosphide fumigant, <clears throat> place two to four tablets as deep into an active burrow as possible. After the product has been applied into the burrow, then seal the burrow first with newspaper, a cow pie, a slice of sod, and then pack with soil to seal the, fumigate, to seal the fumigant down into the burrow. And the product is about 95% effective and costs about $50 an acre to apply. And that's because of the, the uh, labor that's associated with, applicating, uh, with the application of aluminum phosphide. The last toxicant I need to address is gas cartridges, and these also are fumigants like aluminum phosphide, and they too are recommended for use in early spring or in small colonies or as a follow-up to a previous uh, bait application. Again, observation is required for non-target species such as uh, swift fox, burrowing owls, black-footed ferrets, and you can't apply this product within seven kilometers of a prairie dog town unless, number one, uh, you've either uh, you have a, an isolated colony that's less than 80 acres in size. Number two, you've completed a survey for black-footed ferrets. Or three, the area has been cleared by the Fish and Wildlife Service. To apply gas cartridges, first you have to puncture 
the fuse end of the gas cartridge. So you use uh, a nail or other sharp device, you stick it into the fuse end in the holes that are identified, you stir the contents of the gas cartridge, insert the fuse into the gas cartridge so that there's about three inches of fuse extending outside of the cartridge, and then you light that gas cartridge. Hold on to the cartridge until that fuse burns down to the cartridge and ignites the cartridge itself. You'll be able to tell this by the smoke that's uh, expelled out of the gas cartridge. Then toss that gas cartridge fuse end first down into the burrow as deeply as possible. Then follow up by sealing the burrow first with a cow pie, a slice of, slice of sod, um, and, uh, and then packing it tight with soil. Look around the area and reseal that, that uh, burrow opening if you see leaking smoke coming out. And also seal up other burrows where you may happen to see smoke uh, coming out of the ground. Gas cartridges also are about 95% effective at reducing the number of prairie dogs, and they too cost about $50 per acre to apply. If you use anticoagulant baits to control black-tailed prairie dogs on your land, by federal law and by the product label, you must conduct follow-up surveys to remove any hazards to non-target wildlife. Transects can be laid out to search areas effectively. Disposal is simply by deep burial and you must report all incidents. If you have any further questions, check with the product label, the product website, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, or the Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you and good luck.